Andre and uh, Londi and everybody, thank you for, for organizing this. This first outing of uh, this cooking I've done here. Um, I'm amazing. I'm like Spikiri. I don't know whether you know Spikiri. Some people know who Spikiri is. I'm prettier than Muhammad Ali. When I was writing this book, I felt like I was floating at some point. Hey. Um, that's uh, what I'm feeling from a certain point, about 2014, when I entered a certain space of thinking. I'm like fairer then. See, I'm done with the nonsense teacher. That's what fella said, right? I was playing some Nina Simone earlier because, yeah, I feel like a sinner man who's being freed from sin. I'm like guru. I listened to a lot of music when I was writing this. I have a desk facing the road and I would watch people that listen to music. There's one of three spaces I wrote from. And I brought together in this collaboration. And you can't see this collaboration, you see. You can't see that it's a collaborative work of being in the same room with women, men, young and old, of learning to see in a particular way, to hear and to read. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm like Tandi Samozoi, yeah, at some points. Like Bessie Head, like Miriam, huh? Yeah. Like I'm Johannes Pukela. Somebody was saying this on Facebook yesterday. I enjoy Johannes Pukela's work. The irony is amazing. Like I'm support. Or any artist selling his work or her work on the side of the road. What I've learned from the music, from the art, from the dancing, from Casper Nuvest, is the art, the art of struggle. The art of struggle to create to dare to create, to be free, and to be wrong. Somebody was talking about this quite a lot. And to write as if I, I like, as if, it, as if I love. Premesh Lalu said, Biko could not write what he liked, actually. I don't know. I'm too unknown to be humble, and too to be modest. To be humble and voiceless, is to misappreciate the discourse of power, actually. Mandela could afford to be humble. You and I, certainly me, I have to fight to write and sing and see what I like. So I'm like Taiwa Moleleko, right? Like Lucky Dube or Naila Blackman, or Peter Tosh. I'm not Brenda Fars, it's weekend special. What I am is all week, all year special. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am to feel, after all the struggle, after all the ancestors, to be regarded as fully human, that I'm nothing? I think Mandela said something like that. I'm paraphrasing, or close to that. I'm like Ali Farka Ture from Pele Holiday. So the point of all this is there's a certain point, there's a certain thing we don't do in our classes to tell especially black women, young black women, young black men, that they're amazing. They have to learn to trust their voice. And I learned this from hip hop heads, from youngster like Cape Town, from Nas, from Kanye West when, and Jeezy saying, I'm amazing. And they mean that because the world doesn't want them to be amazing. They'll shoot them before they say good morning. So, you're amazing, believe it, this is what I now know. It. I know it on the surface of my skin. I know it in my arteries, I know it in the deep recesses of my being. A professor, a friend of mine says, there's a certain space in Cape Town. This is somebody who's 
an amazing woman. It says when she gets into this space, she feels she doesn't belong. She was born in Cape Town. I always find that's quite amazing, but I know it's a common thing. It's a common thing. Why a book like this then? Let me just uh, get more tradition. I, I don't know. I would like to know at uh, some point today who will read this book and how. I have no idea actually who the readers of the book will get, who what they are and what they will get from, from it. What I'm trying to play here, what I call for students, for young scholars, for young scientists, and out of school groups, those we call dropouts, what I call them to see and to do. But I damn like what I wrote. And I started wanting to do this book myself from the first way I wrote to its selling. And I got in touch with young black men who are editors. I well, like, got in touch with one who's a law student, by the way, but he's amazing. This is a queer young man who's doing law, but he's also a photographer. And he, he does these amazing things. He just does stuff. I says, I have a book project. I want you to, to take it from, from me to produce it. I was trying to do a book in a, in a different way. I've done so many books, really, in a traditional way. And he took it and he gave it to young, another young man, an uh, inventor. But he didn't quite do what I wanted to do. Um, so I said, thanks, man. maybe we'll do another thing. Let me, I was trying to do an independent indie in book writing. I took it and I gave it to, to uh, Roshan Kada. Oh, she's amazing. I've never said a, a publisher is amazing. She looked at it. She says, I don't know what you're trying to do here. I don't know what you're trying to do, but let's see. And this, this is what you have. Because I, I will write probably. Like all of you, I'm forced to write every year three, four, five articles where I do the boring stuff. I'm going to tell you this. I tell you this, and I just tell you what I just told you. That's how we write, right? I said, no, 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 I, I don't want to. I can do that. That's, that's not the book I want to write, that I really want to write. And from now on, there are books that I want to write and the books that I'm forced to write. I wish I could let go of the books that I'm forced to write and the things I'm forced to do. I hope I've put up one model. I have, see, I don't have a model. I've never had a model. <coughs> in the discipline in which I was schooled, in the discipline that I work in, which is different from the third discipline in which I lead a unit. And in all the disciplines I read, from health, to sociology, to women's studies, to philosophy, to politics, to history, and to masculinities, some of you may have been lucky enough, fortunate enough, to have that model of uh, of a free scholar, of an anti-colonial scholar. I think all of us always go to two people, or many of us anyway. We go to Fano, right? Some of us may go to Amy Cesare, a little bit further back, or maybe Simone, a little bit further back. And outside of the classroom, you go to Biko, right? Uh, a model of an African scholar. And so I'm very happy to have come after this discussion we had an African scholar in the way Grace Musila suggests that some people have a problem of being an African scholar when they reach a certain point. And she says, what's this? I mean, what, what is this that you can't be an African scholar and write for the world and be on the world stage? A more courageous scholar, a free, anti-colonial, unruly African in the way I'm learning to feel since 2014 in particular in the way I write in this book. So here's the core of why a book like this. I absolutely, absolutely intend a certain kind of seeing, of learning, of creating, of being, of being, of being. But only time will tell if the kind of independence of seeing, of evading Europe and America a feeling of thought is the kind my students, my students in particular, and those whose lives I could contribute to desire. I don't know whether this is it, but that's okay. 
In fact, I encourage that this is not be their way of seeing the world. So what does the book do? You would think what the author of a book such as this would desire is something similar to that of a charismatic preacher, that I want followers. Uh, but you'd be wrong, actually. I would be satisfied if I wake up dead, as they say in Jamaica, if I wake up dead and a, and a bench um, would be named after me on my street. Um, maybe even a lecture room in a psychology department. Actually, no, you'd be wrong. I, I don't want that. I absolutely want that. No awards for me. Sorry, Nobu. <laughs> I like awards for other people. I like giving awards, as a matter of fact. My, my wish is to be the object of criticism. I really would like, instead of Baudrillard or Jack Halberstam, I want my students to criticize me, to, to say, Ratele, you are completely wrong on this one. You are wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. I want to hear students reject my ideas. I really want that. I want to be shown I am wrong, 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 wrong. Not African psychologists, not African people, that me, me. And this is what Tanahisi Kos says without so many words. If you lift yourself up a little bit, if you could be, in fact, he takes it from Fanon, right? I want to be hated for myself, for me, not for black people. And at that moment, you have entered a certain space because I'm not confused with Sipo Lameni, with Nesiswatiti, Rebecca Hellman, I'm conf it's me, it's my, the world looks like this from inside. When I say from here, I don't mean only a location, I mean that as well, from Africa, but I also mean consciousness. Like literally, I see something different from you, and that is an important thing, that is lifting existence to the level of the human. As a matter of fact, uh, it already started because uh, two days ago I received a paper uh, in response to something I wrote and somebody says, further thoughts on African psychology, a different view. And then the abstract says, I reject what Radele is saying. I think, I like that. <laughs> not really. But they send it to me, so that's not a good idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the book about? It's about clearing confusion. Certainly my own. It's about disalienation. The book was called, been sent to, the, to the, the publisher and to this young man, first of all, African Psychology for the Confused. And they said, no, 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 no we don't like that. African Psychology for the Alienated. They said, mm, yeah, mm, okay, yeah, mm, but there's something here we'd like you to do a little bit more of. And I went back and I did that. They said, maybe because of you're writing as if you're writing for a Twitter age. We can, we can soften the title. And I had the title, the third title, this is what you see. It's about a certain way of seeing the world, of relearning, remembering to see the world with your own eyes. It's a hard thing, actually, this thing of seeing, of seeing, of looking, and telling people, this is what I see. Thank you, Mr. Foucault. <laughs> of leaning to read again, I read the page as if as somebody was saying, this is terrible, all right? I mean, this is the most amazing thing. The moment you read and you re realize that Fanon was existing, and Foucault doesn't reference Fanon, at least in his writing, he says, what is happening here? So Marx was not writing for, for the colonial subject. Freud was not writing for the colonial subject, was not writing for me. Of course, it's already a disruption the moment you read Freud, right? When he says primitive, but the primitive is writing, is reading Freud. He says, okay, yeah. <laughs> so I started on a journey of to hell with itness. I'm stopping caring about what I should care about, what I'm told to care about, about a certain kind of respect that conceals infrahumanization, a certain infrahumanizing dis 
that I can be African and original and see the world from here and talk to the world from here. That I can't create, I can't fly. This is a book about psychological freedom. Point 98, page 205. Discursive freedom, freedom to look, to feel, to think. So let me do that. <coughs> this uh, chapter starts by talking about political freedom. It goes on to say psychological freedom. Being such a historically inflected, dense, context-dependent phenomenon is a founding supposition of African psychology, the way I see it. Racism does not end at the structural level. The level of the law, police, white terrorism, segregated neighborhoods, and unequal education, but requires psychological strategies to oppress, to govern, to terrorize, segregate, and make unequal. Racist control is a behavioral, cognitive, an emotional condition as much as a legal, institutional, and representational fact. Hence, to free people's actions, thoughts, perceptions, and feelings, we need a disciplinary orientation that is not reluctant to nurture African psychological self-determination. So what am I trying to achieve with the book? I do not want to have the last word to repeat what I said earlier on, uh, on African psychology. And let me read something again. Point 100. The last point. I will not have the final word, especially when we consider the future, such as what an introductory textbook on African-centered psychology would look like, or one on social psychology, or on neuropsychology from an African-centered perspective, on African-centered child development, or any other area of psychology that situates African realities, African-centered knowledge and knowledge making, and African lives at the center. It is obvious that a great many more words have to come. A great deal more work is necessary. However, in the end, I return to the questions that contain the most potential for the work that must be done towards centering Africa in psychology. What does it mean, Sipo was, to say African? in African psychology. What does it mean? What precisely does the project of centering Africa and Africans entail? When will the time come when the majority of African students of psychology and African psychologists have, come, have overcome the enervating, even re-traumatizing inferiority complexes imposed on them in relation to US and European psychology. But I will have my word, I will speak, I will teach students as I've been doing then, since then, and I will learn from students as much as I do from artists, from dancers, from architects, oh architects. Francis, Francis, is it Gary, Derry, from um, Burkina Faso? The work that he does is amazing. You don't have to call it African-centered, but it talks about where he lives. From Shoma Josie, from Dumile Feni, from Youngster Cape Town, from the Soul Brothers, remember the Soul Brothers? From Basket and Common. And do not forget, do not forget Derrida, alongside Toyin Falula and Fatou So. So I will create spaces. This idea is to create spaces, discursive spaces, emotional spaces, physical spaces similar to what Andre really is doing here. To bring together psychologists, architects, musicians, photographers, filmmakers, um, and I wanted images in the book, but they were prohibitive because the images are precisely what artists do, right? Photographers, this is what I see. This is what she sees here, and she's amazing. This work is amazing. This was at the Cape Town Art Festival. I don't know about this, but it's fantastic because precisely this, this is because both architects and art students work in a different way from psychology students, right? They work in a, sometimes in, in studio kinds of lecture rooms, so they feed from each other, right? And they learn to do certain things, I guess, 
collaborating with each other. And we try to create that where I work. So along sociologists, health scientists, activists. So this is an invitation for me. This is an invitation, the first letter to my students about how to learn to see the world, to create and to create us as well, of all stripes, to think a certain way. Oh, that's a wrong thing to say. I don't want them to think in a certain way. I want them to think from where they are, to think about their experiences and write them down of doing or being together and bringing something together into existence. Thank you.